Master Grade Sazabi version KA. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert184, 2Rs2Bs, Gundam.tk, and his Char, and his massive Sazabi version Katoki Hajime turns around to face his arch nemesis, Amaro Ray, before they just settle things off on the court with a game of uh, basketball. Anyway, it's time to get to a few more poses, show off that inner frame, the shiny silver that I painted up, and of course, you're going to be getting some silver ish out of the box. And don't forget on GundamReviews.net, on the front page of the video's new and in the Sazabi's post, if it's not, you can vote, if you only choose one, MG Sazabi version Katoki or the new Gundam, which one do you prefer? And of course, so you always get to vote, do you like the kid, yay or nay? This guy is running an insane approval rating right now. Don't forget to go vote for him, yay or nay, and some of my other kits, just to see how much of a monster this guy is in terms of public approval. I'm a big fan of the way the beam sabers pop out of the wrist there and say what you will about the short tomahawks here. The too long and the beam saber in there in the middle is going to be my display of choice, I'm sure. Effect parts, I don't know if they've ever been put to better use here in terms of the coloring, size, and just plain massiveness. And if you were forgetting the feeling that this guy's a melee only kit, well, no, he's got another mode. If you want to put it that way, the funnels, I've got to say, I think these just are a fantastic addition here. Just by tilting them a little bit forward here and revealing them. It's great the way the black parts pop up here and expose the silver there on the inside. And the funnels are looking great with that little tiny gray detail inside the reds. Anything that you can do to get the eyes of your viewers on your shelf looking down at this. You're not going to forget that this guy is at least going to be causing some consternation from a distance before he closes in for something angrier. And though he has had some shield issues, let's see how the long is going to be working with an old full frontal borrowed bazooka. And the answer, well at least the way I've got the arm designed here, is so far not so good. But at other angles there, it's propping itself up a little bit on the base now. And on his front skirt, it's not going to do a terrible job. Just don't expect anything too gravity-defying out of this guy with this big add-on. But with pretty good arm mobility here, even though it looks like the gun itself is separating somewhat, even though from that angle it looks a little bit strange from this one, it's not going to be all that bad as he can just get a little bit of help from the left hand. And it is unfortunate that occasionally here, the hands are slightly problematic getting in and out of there. Sometimes they fall out when you don't want, and other times they just don't want to stay in place. But you can see that he may just go toppling as the leg. Part of this is, of course, is just because this is too small. Hopefully you're not having the same problem over time. And for some old school fun, though other people may leave for work in the morning with a bento box in hand, sure, he carries an old school long rifle. This guy even just looks menacing when he's walking out of the hangar towards space to go dish out some neo Zeon justice. Slash injustice, depending on your perspective. And there is a very good chance that this may be my lasting pose on the shelf. These two guys look incredible together, but just the sheer raw power that's oozing out of every single part of this guy. Too much year-end fun. And I'm hoping that green light will stay on. And so far, so good. And like the Shining Gundam, the Unicorn Gundam, which impressed so many when it was finally revealed its destroy mode, and of late, the new Gundam, well, this guy can hulk out as well. So here he is, half-transformed. You can see that everything is just going to be a little bit bigger over here. The one that really stands out in contrast is the shoulder there. The silver is definitely going to be uh, helping as you get to see it in contrast against the gray underneath. The side skirts you're going to see a little bit more, but there's also boosters on display depending on the angle that you see it from. This is a nice little touch as the side skirts just slide open there. And the legs somewhat disappointing perhaps because they do just spread out incredibly as you got to see as I maneuver them all over the place in the parts video. However, because your eye is going to be drawn up here, you're not necessarily going to see the fact that we've got more boosters available on the side and on the back, but still, he looks bulked out and angry. And though I extend my shoulders too far, and the fennel casing there has fallen off on a couple sides, but if I came across a little bit unimpressed when he was half done, 
just by making sure everything was open, and especially when you actually get to see him spin around there, this guy is a monster. I, I, I don't know if I could put it any other way. When you see something like the Shinaju incredible design, but now when you see this guy, he looks boring in comparison. So let's start at the bottom. For the legs, I'd say everything's going to be looking a little bit better here. I made sure that things were more protruded off to the side and out of the back. You are going to be seeing a little bit of gray, even if you're looking down from the front there. But it's the little gray details there. It would have been nice if they had a booster on the inside. But look at that monster that's going to be protruding yellow in gray. And then you've got that silver that you're going to be seeing from the front as well. I'd say that these legs bulked out. You may not notice why, and they're not necessarily going to have the same thrust options that the Shinanju does have, but this guy just looks great so far. The midsection now, where I've got to say it's a bit of a shame that this is going to be hidden in the back. Once you get those extra thrusters out there, there's even more. Plenty of silver to be seen on display. The arm's a little bit tricky for me, but I tried to fix them up better than I did before. And the side skirts and the front skirts. I'm a real fan of the subtle touches there on the front skirts. As it could have been overt, but I like the subtleness here. You've still got the focus on the red and the old music note treble clef. But instead you've got this nice little bit of silver zigzagging around. It could have been solid, but instead they made it look like it's a natural part of the interior machinery. But for the upper body, they're going to be helped out immeasurably by what you're seeing right there. First of all, that backpack always looks good and you don't have to go funnels out. But look at this. You're going to be seeing three funnel uh, thrusters down there, more on the internal side and look at the silver 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 all over the place and again the fact that they've gone with that zigzag pattern where it's silver on gray instead of it just being one or the other you know this may be standing out even more i'd say than the clear green inside the new and definitely it may be worth having two of this guy to have one deploy or one displayed with everything out and one just in his regular mode both looking incredible and for the new well, I think I'm always just going to have them with that green out because it is quite subtle. And fully loaded to bear. And remember that he does still have a few more options, borrowed ones included. The shield is still going to fit on well, despite the fact that it's got those open parts on the forearm. Love that twist forward option there. Lots of room to maneuver. And the beam tomahawk. Unfortunately, the weight of the shield on the forearm. And when you put in the extra weight of this, just seems to droop down a little bit. But with a little bit of help from the beam shot there, it's easily propped up, and either way, you can actually support it. But that silver protruding all over the place, the combination of the glowing eye, the effect parts, the silver, the reds... This, I have to say, is a visual and engineering feat. And fully bulked out, even though we should be looking at it from the back, I can't help but be reminded of Gundam vs. Gundam, where it's always great to see the two MSs launch side by side, you and your partners, and then just see the size difference between them. If you're talking SS and V, well, it's still going to be pretty similar here. This guy's average, but hulked out, Sazabi's huge. Although, is he as majestic as the non-feathered Wing Zero? And thank you, Katoki Hajime, for introducing the idea of an inner frame that comes out to be on show. So that'll wrap up my look at the MS here for this modern masterpiece, if it's not too early to call it. But this is a kit that's well worth a final verdict, so stick around, I'm going to have a list. There are a fair number of negatives, but lots of positives to balance it out, as you've seen. And of course, you guys have had it in hand longer than me, at least in tech. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the kit, on the poses, on the weapons you're choosing to use when you display it, and your favorite features or lack thereof. Thanks for watching, everybody, and stick around for one more. See ya! So, what do you have for lunch? Why would they have ever put me at 2,500 points? I mean, if the Nightingale's out there, sure, knock me down 500 in comparison. But at the same time, Char's best suit should be a proper top-level kit. Character. Fighter. Ride.